Okay. Uh, all right. So the topic for today's uh, class is a cost sharing game. And uh, the idea is to come up to merge the VCG mechanism that we have studied with uh, uh, so some sort of mechanism design that leads to coalition formation. And then you want to make sure that everything is truthful and strategy proof and so on. OK, so that's the idea here. Um, What's the setting? So the setting is as follows. Uh, let's say, uh, so let's start with this facility location problem. It's a fairly uh, uh, famous game, facility location game. We will introduce mechanism design a little bit uh, later. So where N is the set of cities and F is the set of facilities. Okay, And Fi is the cost of opening facility I and DIN is the distance between I in F and N in N, so the city N, the distance between the facility and the city. Okay, so I have three cities A, B, and C. And I have two facilities, let's say one and two. And uh, there is some distance. So these are the roads. Okay, so city A, if, if you want to use, if the residents of city A want to use facility one, then of course the facility one should be open. Uh, but Maybe opening facility one is too costly. So in some sense, we will force the residents of city A to take this path and move to facility two and use facility two for whatever uh, work they have, OK? Um, <coughs> so the idea is to look at the cost of opening facility one and facility two. So which, what makes more sense? And then once you have opened a set of facilities, how should you divide the cost among the residents, among the city, city A, B, and C? OK. Um, so let's look at, so, so let's say S is a subset of N. So S is a subset of N. Then your C of S is the total cost. Rather, I shouldn't say total, but minimum cost to service city in the set S. OK. So how do you find C of S? Well, here is an optimization problem that you need to solve. So C of S equals to minimum over I in F. No, sorry. Minimum of summation Fi X is already used. Um, I need uh, integer variables. Let's say wi wi plus summation d i n y i n this i is in f and this 
uh, n is in set S and then summation i in f where you want the following to hold for every n in S you want summation of y i n should be greater than equal to 1 and this summation is over all y in f and then for every n in s for every i in f you want w i should be greater than equals to y i n and then you want w i to be 0 1 and you want y i n to be in 0 1 okay so you solve an integer program to figure out which facilities to open and how do you connect the cities to individual facilities So this minimization is over all possible wi and all possible yin. Okay, so minimum over w and y. Okay. So in some sense the distance between city A and facility 1 is featured in the cost function you know it's linear so the cost let's say the cost of going from city a to facility 1 is the same as the distance between the facilities so now uh, in order to compute the solution of this c of s you have to solve an integer program you solve many many integer program and you find what is the cost of a Serving A is the cost of B, cost of C, the cost of A comma B, and so on, right? And you find out all these costs, and now that you have opened these two facilities, let's say the solution is to open both these facilities, uh, then you have this overall cost. How do you actually uh, divide the cost among these individual cities? Okay, so that's the cost sharing problem. In the case of Uber, for instance, uh, there is some cost of moving people from point A to point B in a city. How should they, how should they charge you as individual customers? How should, how should they exactly charge you so that they are able to recoup the entire cost of facilitating the transport of so many people within a city? Okay, so. That's the kind of problems you can essentially solve from this uh, cost sharing uh, cost sharing game. <coughs> now one thing that you will notice is, is the problem is sufficiently large, you cannot really find the cost of individual the C of S, right? Uh, you can't even find C of N. That's also difficult to find, uh, but you still need to uh, come up with a way to allocate the cost to individual uh, individual people who are individual cities in this case uh, who are in n who are in the set n so we need to come up with some way of relaxing the idea of core okay so let's see what the original idea of core is for this class of problems and how do you come up with an approximate core uh, which which gets around in some sense with this problem that you can't really compute the exact cost, the exact minimum cost uh, because of the computational limitations imposed by uh, solving an integer program. So we'll assume that there is a grand coalition
So we will assume that we have grand coalition in which case the X and R N capital N so N is 1 to capital N so the core would satisfy summation of xn equals c n summation of xn less than equal to c s <coughs> n in s n in n okay and then xn less than equal to cn so this is the budget balance constraint efficiency this is group rationality and this is individual rationality Okay, so we define the idea of a uh, approximate core. So the definition of gamma core. So let me define it as C gamma N C. You let summation of X N N in N is greater than well. gamma c n less than equals to summation of x n n in n is less than equal to c n and then group rationality and individual rationality okay so that's the idea of uh, an approximate core gamma approximate core so you want the budget balance instead of having equality you want to satisfy this inequality constraint one thing that i don't understand is where is this extra money going to come from right c of n is the cost of servicing these people how are they going to make up for the shortfall i don't quite know uh, but the the issue the 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 idea is that by relaxing the efficiency constraint even if the core is non empty for the original problem the core becomes non empty so if core is empty for the original problem with the efficiency constraint you can make it non empty by relaxing the efficiency constraint or the budget balance constraint and allow it to have some sort of deficit in the budget in the total budget so then it works out fine okay one thing you will notice is so far we were talking about valuations but now we are talking about the cost okay because this is a cost sharing game uh you can come up with uh, so when is the core non empty well bondereva shapley theorem can give you a uh, set of necess necessary and sufficient conditions when the core is non empty and a similar argument can be made to figure out if gamma core is non empty or not okay so nothing uh, fancy about th th there's nothing uh, very difficult going on in this class of problems so far there is no mechanism design okay so far it's all about uh it's all about sharing the cost so now let's put mechanism design on top of this cost sharing game any question so far okay so so now you have let's say i uh, called an uber the uber says well how much are you willing to pay for the ride 
that you want to take. Uh, and then I will bid my price that I want to pay $30 for this ride. I want to pay at most $30 for this ride. And then Uber needs to decide whether Uber has to serve me or not based on whatever price I quote. And how much should I pay actually for the ride that I'm going to take, okay? So there is an auction going on. So what is the coalition here? The coalition would be how many customers Uber will serve based on whatever bids Uber has received at that particular time. So the idea is to conduct an auction and decide on coalition. Okay, so N is set of bidders, C that maps 2 raised to N to R greater than or equal to 0 is the cost of serving uh, cost of serving uh, customers or rather bidders in subsets of N UN is the value to player to bidder N and the utility is UN QN minus PN. PN is the price. PN price of bidder N. And QN is a binary variable. QN in 0, 1. And then BN is the bid of bidder N. And then Q, which depends set of customers, set of bidders served, and P N, which depends on price price of bidder n oh i think i have already written it price of bidder n okay so that's the overall mechanism okay so is the setting clear? Okay, there is a, there is an auction. Based on the auction, the company will decide how many bidders it's going to serve uh, based on uh, based on the bids. So based on the bids, it will decide which bidders the company wants to serve, and what should the price of each bidder n be, right? So. So there is some amount of, so there is some sort of cost sharing that's going to go to, in order to serve those bidders, right? So, so that's the idea in this particular case. So now we have to think about, see, this problem is slightly different from the VCG mechanism, right? If you remember, you had one item, you wanted to allocate that item to some bidder, and you wanted to come up with how should you allocate the allocation mechanism and the pricing mechanism of the bidder. Now the setting is slightly different because now you have the option of serving multiple bidders and the cost of serving multiple bidders is not equal to the cost of serving individual bidders. Okay? Uh, if you have 10,000 customers, the cost is not equal to 10,000 multiplied by cost of serving a single customer. Okay? In case of Uber, that becomes quite natural because if there are too many cars around, 
it's much easier to serve all the customers instead of having just one car in the entire city to serve just a single customer, in which case the cost is substantially higher. So again, going back to um, the mechanism design framework, what should the property of these sets Q, the set Q and the pricing PN should be? What do you think uh, would be a reasonable assumption or reasonable things to, uh, to assume uh, in order to compute Q and PN? Any, any thoughts? What restriction do we need to impose on these, on PN and on Q, which kind of makes sense? Okay, so the first uh, obvious, first obvious condition is no positive transfer, which says PN should be greater than or equal to zero. I mean, that's a no-brainer. Uh, what about PN for customers that are not served? What should PNB? Zero, right? So voluntary participation which says that PN should be equal to zero for all and not in Q. And the second, so that's the first point. The second point is that PN should be less than or equal to BN for all n in Q, okay? So I can't charge you more than what you bid, okay? You bid $30 for moving from, going from your home to the airport, I can't charge you above $30. I can charge you 25, I can charge you 20, and I can charge you 30, but not $31. The third assumption, or the third condition is consumer Sovereignty, which says there exist B and star such that if N bits B and star, then uh, N is in the set of people who are serviced. Okay, no matter what other people do, no matter no matter what others bid. Okay, so if I want to go from here to the airport and I'm willing to pay a thousand dollars for that, Uber will definitely give me some service, okay? They won't say that I don't want to give you any service, no matter what happens, no matter what others are bidding. And the fourth is uh, gamma budget balance. Now this is something that I don't understand. <coughs> Why would uh, we want to run a deficit? But anyways, that's the condition imposed. Gamma C of Q should be less than equals to summation. Pn should be less than N in Q should be less than equal to C of Q. Okay, so we want the pricing scheme to satisfy these uh, four conditions. That should be the ideal case, ideal pricing scheme. Okay. Does that make sense? Any questions? Okay.
so the goal is to find a mechanism of coming up with this set q and the price pn so that there is no collusion among the people okay so that's that's known as group so the goal is find group strategy proof mechanisms okay um so which means that uh no incentive for s n to collude and change bits okay so let's say we want to have everyone in this class wants to go to the airport and we kind of come up with some say something to uh we collude and figure out our bn in such a manner that all our prices to go to the airport goes down uh no matter what others do okay so we are always better off at least all of us are always better off if we collude and change our bids change our bids bn okay if we all bid on our own maybe half the class will get to go to the airport the other half will not get to go to the airport but if we collude and change our bids everyone gets to go to the airport and in fact the prices also go down okay so we don't want that kind of situation to arise in this particular mechanism so that's known as group strategy proof mechanisms <clears throat> no incentive to collude so remember that in our in the when we were talking about vcg mechanism we talked about or rather mechanism design we talked about myerson's lemma which said i mean and your current assignment also requires uh, i mean it talks about myerson's lemma which said that if your allocation function satisfies certain property then there exist prices that leads to truthful behavior right that's myerson's lemma um uh, we will try to come up with similar concepts here uh because so so what's the idea idea uh fix um fix a pricing scheme scheme to get fix a pricing scheme uh to get q okay and we need to impose some restriction on the pricing scheme so so let's uh, let's see what the pricing scheme should be so let's first define what a pricing scheme is so the first definition is uh cost sharing scheme so so i have c that maps n cross 2 raised to n to 0 infinity and this is my cost sharing scheme what should it satisfy well c of i comma s or c of n comma s should be equal to 0 for all n not in s okay this is a very reasonable restriction to make if i am going to service s customers then customers outside of the set s should not pay anything that's a cost sharing scheme then the second definition is gamma budget balance which means that gamma c of s is less than equal to summation c i comma s i in s is less than equal to c of s yeah. 
And the third, which is the most important definition, is the cross monotone. This should this should resonate with uh, monotone allocation function. So we want C i comma s should be greater than C i comma s union t for all i in s. So let's look at let's look at what's happening. So the company sought bids from individual customers. We want the pricing scheme to have some uh, reasonable properties. Uh, let's say I come up with a pricing scheme. Okay, that's my cost sharing scheme, which satisfies these. Uh, two properties. Okay, so gamma budget balanced is right here. Uh, cost sharing scheme is right here. Okay, uh, and somehow you have to come up with a good cost sharing scheme. So how would you come up with a good cost sharing scheme? Well, your cost sharing scheme should be cross monotone. So what does cross monotone says? Well, if I is an S, the cost of serving I should decrease if you increase the number of customers in the system. Okay, so that's a fairly reasonable property to ask. That if you add more users to this platform, the cost of serving me should not increase. Okay, so think if you think about Uber, if the number of customers who are using Uber becomes higher, then the cost to individual customers should also should should go should become lower. Okay, it shouldn't become higher. So that's the cross monotone uh, pricing scheme. Uh, and what do we want? We want to get the the set of customers who we want to who we want to uh, uh, service under these uh, under this cost sharing scheme. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? So what do you think should we do? Okay, so we come up with a cost sharing scheme. Somebody designed this cross sharing scheme, gave it to us, satisfies these two conditions. It's also satisfied, it happens to satisfy this cross monotone condition. So what condition is it not satisfying right now? So Pn is greater than or equal to zero. Well, by definition, C is going to be greater than or equal to zero. So this is satisfied. This is satisfied because that's part of cost sharing scheme. This, we haven't yet imposed that restriction there. Okay, so this is not satisfied. This is, well, uh, th that is not satisfied there. But the gamma budget balanced condition is satisfied, okay, by the cost sharing scheme. So how do we come up with this set Q? Somehow we need to take a closer look at this particular inequality, okay? So how do we find which customers to serve, okay? How do we find this set Q? What do you think a reasonable algorithm should be from your perspective, which would eventually converge to that set Q? Any thoughts? No? Okay, so you started a company, you came up with a cost sharing scheme, everybody has made a bid,
people who want to use your service, they have made the bid B1, B2, B3, all the way up to Bn. How would you decide who you want to serve and who you don't want to serve? Assuming that you want to make sure that each player, each player pays less than or equal to what it bids. What do you think you would do? Sorry? Second price auction? Second price auction? No. Uh, you can't do an auction here because you know the prices, uh, the cost doesn't really vary linearly with the number of customers you serve. Okay. Well, iteratively remove the players whose bids are lower than the cost it's going to, the, the amount it's going to cost you to serve them. Okay, and hopefully it will converse to a queue that's, that you would, that, that is ideal, that you should ideally serve. So let's see the mechanism of finding Q. Remember in the VCG mechanism, we said that if you have, if your allocation function is monotone, then there exist prices that elicits truthful behavior. In this case, we have a pricing scheme that satisfies cross monotone condition, which would eventually give you a very desired property, a group strategy proof mechanism. Okay, so the mechanism is as follows. So step one, so you initialize S1 equals M. So you plan on serving all the customers. Okay, K equals one. And in step K, uh, well, not, well, S0, K equals zero. And then you have step whatever. Uh, let me, uh, Step two, uh, S while S k equals x k minus one, you have S k equals n in S k minus one such that B n is greater than or equal to C n comma S k minus one. And when it converges, you will have the same set. The set doesn't change. And then the step three would be to output Q equals SK. And of course, PN equals C N comma SK. Okay, so you have iteratively removed those customers whose bids were lower than the cost, uh, the, 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 their cost share in some sense. Okay, and by removing this, you come up with a set of customers who you want to serve, and you come up with a pricing scheme for all of those customers. Now the question is, does it satisfy group strategy proof. In other words, can there be a set of customers who can collude and change their bids so as to reap better benefit, better overall utility? And the answer is no. This, as long as your C was cross monotone, there is no incentive for anyone to collude in this particular mechanism. Okay? So that's the main result here. Okay, so the main result is theorem C is cross monotone 
gamma budget balanced then uh, there exists a unique maximal set simul set such that bn is greater than equal to let's say the set is s bn is greater than equal to cn comma s okay so we need this cross monotonicity condition the second is mechanism returns that's maximal set and the third conclusion is it is group strategy proof and of course gamma budget balanced okay so there are striking parallels between myerson's lemma and this particular result in myerson's lemma we said that if allocation rule satisfies some monotonicity condition then there exist prices that elicit truthful behavior here we say that if the pricing scheme satisfies cross monotonicity condition then there exists a mechanism which is this mechanism that tells you which customers you want to uh which customers you want to uh um serve and that the there will be no incentive for any customers to actually form a group and try to change the the bids in order to improve their own payoff individual payoff okay now the now you might ask a question that great i mean if we have a cross monotone pricing scheme or cross monotone cost sharing scheme i can come up with a set of customers and i get all the nice properties group strategy proof and what not how do i come up with a cross monotone pricing scheme i mean it's a chicken and the egg problem we want to get here we want to get to the group strategy proof mechanism okay and someone comes and tells me well i need my pricing scheme or the cost sharing scheme to be cross monotone uh then there is a way to have a group strategy proof mechanism but how do i come up with a cross monotone pricing scheme so let's look at that problem that's the next problem that we want to address but any question so far okay everything is fairly straight forward so so the next question is how to get cross monotone cost sharing scheme the issue yeah sorry sharing scheme yeah for any cost function well we started with any cost function but in order to answer this question we have to restrict our attention to a much smaller set of cost functions <coughs> okay so that's the next uh next idea so we started with an arbitrary cost uh an arbitrary arbitrary way of uh, coming up with cost c of s and we have this result this very good result very strong result uh but now we need to restrict our attention to a more um, benign class of cost functions so that's called sub modular games 
Okay. So what are submodular game? Well, N C is submodular if and only if for every S comma T which is a subset of N, C of S plus C of T is greater than equals to C of S union T plus C of S intersection T. This is also known as concave concave game or uh, not uh, well concave or convex it has some name yeah this is known as concave game well, concave when you have cost function, convex when you have value function, okay? What does this, what does this condition imply? Well, this is equivalent to saying for every S which is a subset of N minus I comma J, my C of S union I minus C of S is greater than equal to C of S union I comma J minus C of S union J. Okay. So these are equivalent definitions, okay? There is no loss of generality. What does this, what is the, this side? This is the marginal increase in cost for serving customer I. And this is the marginal cost of increase. So the marginal increase in cost of serving customer I when customer J is already present in the system, okay? So, you see the same idea here, as the number of customers increase, the marginal cost of serving I decreases. Okay, pick any customer, the marginal cost to serve that customer decreases as more and more customers arrive and start using that particular platform. Okay. So some modular games are, uh, I mean, it seems like a fairly, fairly reasonable assumption in a large class of, uh, in a large class of games that we would naturally encounter in our research. So, so that's good. Now I need to introduce what the cost sharing scheme for this particular game, a cross monotone cost sharing scheme for this particular game is going to look like. So I need to define a set S is tight if summation of C I comma S Well, actually I should just write it as xi, summation of xi i in S is equal to C of S. So xi is the payment of player i. Okay, so we say a set is tight if the amount of cost that each player has to pay, you sum it up over that set and you get the overall cost of that particular set. Okay, so the algorithm to compute cross monotone cost share 
uh, for set Q. Okay, so now there is a slight issue here where we have decided what are the set of customers we want to serve already. Okay, and now we need to compute the cross monotone cost sharing scheme for these set of customers. So let's say input Q subset of N be the set of agents, set of players or bidders receiving the service. Step one, we want to initialize, so my xj is equal to zero for all j in n, and my f is equal to null set. And I have a submodular, I mean within a submodular game. I need to decide these xj's. They do, do, so in the end, c will give c will be uh, well. We'll see what the value of c is going to be. Okay. So uh, I initialized with everyone paying zero cost, and now slowly I have to start increasing the cost. Okay. So that's my step two. While q minus f is not equal to null set. So of course, initially we start with the null set. So q minus f is going to be equal to q. So it's not a null set. So what do I do? Well, I increase xj's for all j in t in q minus f at the same rate. until a set goes tight Okay, so I increase everyone's payment by a little bit, um, but it has it has to be increased at the same rate. The same rate. So I increased X J to one dollar, one dollar, one dollar for all J. Okay, there is no set, and I tried to look for a set that is tight. I found that there is no set that is tight. So okay, that's fine. Uh, then I increased xj's to two dollars, two dollars, two dollars, two dollars for everyone, and then I found that well, s equals agent one, so there is a one set agent one, it's tight. Okay, then what I'll do is I will make sure that x one is equal to two, so agent one is going to pay two dollars for this particular. Uh, for his for the service that he or she is getting, and in which case my uh, I will freeze that particular x j and I will remove those agents in the tight set. I will remove those agents. So f equals f minus the tight set of agents. Okay, and I'll go back to this while loop again and keep increasing all xj's until for all j in q minus f at the same rate until another set goes tight and I will reduce that entire set from the 
set F itself. No. So you start with Q minus Q minus F, okay, and you are reducing the number of agents in F at every point of time. Oh, I see what you're saying. I think it should be Q minus. Yeah. Right. Okay, so F is the maximal set that is tight. Okay, you eventually want to have F equals to Q. Okay. Wait a second. No, actually I think I don't want Q minus. I just want I just want F to be equal to the tight set of agents. Well, so in the first step, I will have a few agents that are tight. In the second step, I'll have the set of tight agents in the first step and the set of agents who have become tight now. And in the third step, I will have all the sets. So let me just write F as F equals maximal set of a tight set of agents, okay? So that includes the union of all the tight set of agents that you have seen until now. And then you will set C, uh, where do I write? Well, I write here. Set C of I comma Q to be equals to Xi for all I in Q. Okay? And the theorem is that this C that you have found from this process is actually a cross monotone cost sharing scheme. Okay. So this is a bi-level game where there is bidding going on in the first stage and then a coalition being formed in the second stage. Okay, so we started from that setting and we realized that if we have a cross monotone cost sharing scheme, then it will elicit a truthful behavior. In what sense would it be truthful? Well, it's going to be group strategy proof. So there's no reason why somebody should form a coalition and start bidding in a wrongful manner. Okay, so that's good. How do you get a cross monotone cost sharing scheme? Well, we can't do it for the most general case. It's fairly difficult. But we can do it for a submodular game. As long as we know what are the set of, set of customers that you want to serve, as, uh, that you want to serve from your company, right? And so, and so if you know this set Q, well, there is a way to figure out a cross monotone cost sharing scheme. Um, and as long as this, this cost share is going to be less than or equal to BN, that's it, you are in business. There's no reason for anyone to collude among themselves and change their bids. Okay, so there is some sort of iterative process that would go on in order to figure out what are the set of bidders that you would want to serve for this particular submodular game and whether or not the cost share that you receive as part of the solution is less than or equal to BN or not. Okay, so th that's that's an iterative process that you will, you, will, you will go through, but in the end, you will get group strategy proof mechanism uh, for this cooperative game. Now, my personal feeling is that these mechanisms will become fairly common in the future uh, when you have multiple companies collaborating together to provide you services, okay? Um, there are some applications to internet routing uh, so how different service providers work together so as to provide you seamless service when you, you know, log into websites and so on. Um, so there are some, some examples given in the book uh, about those class of problems where, which can be viewed as a cooperative game, but it has some cost sharing involved. So if I 
lay an optic fiber from US to Europe, it's a, lot, it's a lot of cost and somehow I have to share that cost with customers in US and customers in Europe. How would I do that? Well, you have to come up with uh, some cost sharing mechanism to do that. So that's all I have for today. Uh, wanted to give you a flavor of how mechanism design looks like when you have a cooperative game, underlying cooperative game in that setting. So cross monotone cost sharing scheme is fairly, uh, it, it seems to have fairly nice set of properties. And, uh, and it's, not, it's not very different for us to imagine what a cross monotone cost sharing is. If there are more customers to serve, the cost to individual customers are going to go down. I mean, that's what cross monotone scheme suggests. So that's all for today. In the next class, I will talk about polymatrix games that are fairly, uh, that have received a lot of attention recently. That is 2015, 16, 17. So it's pretty much the state of the art at the moment. And the idea is you have a graph you have players as nodes in the graph, and they are playing games among themselves. And how does the equilibrium of the entire game looks like, and how do you compute it? Okay, so we'll talk about it. It has some relationship to Bayesian games, so we'll talk about it in the next class.